applies to Doc Rivers somehow. <laughs> like, Doc can't win for losing, lose for winning. Like, something key. It's not exactly something bad always happens for that guy, but it's something like it. Like, even when the Sixers win, something bad happens and Doc gets pointed to. So the big question was, in this game, why was Embiid even in with four minutes left in game six? Because the Sixers were up big, not just double digits, 20-something points. 29. For a lot of that, a 20-something, 29, 25. So Doc was asked about it at the post-game presser. And the other team had all their guys in, too. Um, the last five minutes of the game, we made the run the last minute of that game, uh, right before that. That's when we got a 29. Um, after Joel made the shot and did the airplane, if you watch the game, I turned and said, let's get, I'm calling a timeout on the next possession. So, not upset that he was in. You can make that a big deal if you want. But uh, just go and look at every team and every game and their guys are in it until about the four or three minute mark. That's what it is. Look, man, I just, I really, I'm going to go ahead and say this. I don't know if we'll see Doc Rivers be the head coach of the 76ers next year. It just, it, it feels like between what happened last year with the Atlanta Hawks, multiple double digit leads, what's happened throughout this year with him answering back at multiple 3 1 leads, Toronto come back. They won the game. It was a big time game by Joel Embiid, but there's no way in hell he should be in the game up 29 points. And look, it just works out that way. But I feel like unless they get past the Miami Heat, which I don't have them getting by the Miami Heat and getting to the Eastern Conference Finals, I don't, I don't know how he comes back. I, I, it feels like this whole thing is set up for Mike Tony to come in and to coach his team. And, Key, here's one other thing about it. I feel like without Joel Embiid, there's several reports he may come back game three, game four. People are starting to build this narrative about can James Harden single-handedly keep – you know, this team in the series. And I feel like we're going to come out of this whole thing when it's all said and done, speaking worse about James Harden because James Harden cannot have that battery pack that he had four or five years ago when he was in Houston, single-handedly producing 40 points a game, 15 assists. It's not the same James Harden. I guess the Heat. And Miami's defense is so good. Look at what they did to Trey Young. We're about to see them do something different to James Harden. So we're going to be talking about James Harden differently than we are even now. And even now, we're not talking about him as great as we used to talk about him. Well, I think if they steal one and they can figure out how to steal one on these two, now you got an opportunity if, if Joel Embiid is actually coming back. You guys like this, James Harden, for whatever reason, I'm not one to count them out because in the regular season – you know, he started to fade toward the end and everybody went crazy. His game changed in the playoffs and everybody's like, oh, this is what James needs to do. Now, all of a sudden, he can't do it. So it's kind of like, all right, you saw him. I guess he was out of shape at the end of the year, but then all of a sudden he got in shape at the start of the playoffs. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense to me. You can't go from one extreme to the next in a matter of days. And so I think he can. I want to see it, though. He's been able to do it at times in the past. I believe... Uh, in the regular season, without Embiid in the lineup, James Harden and company took care of business against Miami. Now, that was in the regular season, different in the playoffs. Miami's defense clearly has gotten better and better and better. But we'll see. I mean, I, I, I'm just not one to count him out just yet with two games. You know, yet, and with two games, you can steal one, and then you get Joe L. Embiid back, and I think that we, it's a different situation. We just showed on uh, on TV. Uh, the ISOs go go almost triple when Embiid is off the court for James Harden. That could be bad news against the Miami defense. It's back up now. Tw- isolations per 100 possessions, 11 when Embiid is on the floor, 27 when Embiid is off the floor for Harden, and he's going against a defense that will be prepared to stop that. I want to go back to what Doc Rivers said, though, guys. I don't like – I'm a Doc fan, but I don't like the way he's been answering some of this criticism. Now – you put yourself in his shoes, and you understand if you're getting criticized for him, your natural instinct's going to be to defend yourself. But there's a way to do it. So first he was like, hey, if you're going to tell the story about the collapses, tell the whole story. That was before the weekend. What about, you know, the fact that I was up in the series with an eight seed and da-da-da? Okay. But Doc should understand, of course, that th- that part of the story's been told, and now we're telling this other part of the story because this it keeps rearing its head. Now they won the series. Good for him. 
Now he's, talk, now he's being asked point blank, why is Embiid in the game? He should answer that question. Instead, what he said was, oh, everyone's playing their guys at that point. That's not an answer to the question. I'm doing it because everyone's doing it. That's not an answer. And he said, oh, we went up 29, then he did the airplane. Then, then I was going to take him out. Yeah, but you were up 20-something for a grip with under five minutes left in the game. What is he doing in the game? Here's an answer. Listen, the but way you guys know, are shooting Max, threes nowadays. Max. Yeah. Them, 20, them 20 points, man, are disappearing a heartbeat in the NBA. Jay, Just say you know that. that. But, so yeah. say that. You know that. But say that or you take him out. And if that lead dissipates to 10 or 15, then you put him back in. Or even just say what Key just said. Hey, the way they're shooting the three ball nowadays, that thing can evaporate in a second. He didn't. He said everyone else is doing it. Not a good answer. It looks, I agree with Jay, man. If Harden gets crazy. shut, if they get by and then Harden gets shut down against the Heat, here comes Dan Tony. Keyshawn, bigger deal. We need to like somehow pump it up more because the second and third rounds especially are really interesting to me. Yeah, I, I'm just going back to what happened in the NBA. I mean, just Jack Harlow sitting courtside. Uh, obviously, we have the Jack Harlow music playing, but him playing with the camera. I don't know if you guys saw that. It was actually like the, the game is being, the camera guy is on the ground, and he's sitting courtside, and he's playing with the dials on the guy's camera, and it goes viral. And I'm like, of course, we're applauding stuff like this. Right. Yeah, but saw some good basketball over the weekend, too. By the way, shout out to my mom, Mama Will. In the hospital, uh, was with her this weekend. Just want to tell you, I love you, Mom. Yeah. Yeah, Jay. Thoughts with you, brother. Thank you, bro. Thank you. So it is time for Straight Talk, brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless. Guys, I, what would you say? I'd say the biggest thing that came out of the weekend of basketball that people are buzzing about was Draymond Green's ejection. Right? That's the thing that people are actually talking about. So Kane Fitzgerald, the the crew chief for the Warriors-Grizzlies game, explains the ejection to the crowd. Listen to this. After review, the foul has been upgraded to a second foul penalty, too. Wow. Draymond Green has been ejected for the windup to the face, impact to the face, the follow through to the jersey, and the throw down to the ground. So, Key, what I saw on that play was Draymond Green... First, coming down with his hand on the face. I thought he could have gotten away with that. Then grabbing the jersey, right, and jerking him down, like like pulling him down. And I think he probably could have gotten away with that, but not both. When you put both together, you go, come on, man, that's not, those aren't basketball moves. So he, he, his intention was too clear. Because he did both of them, they ejected him. Now, Draymond did not agree with the, frag- with the flagrant two foul. Listen to Draymond's response to everything on his podcast, an emergency episode of his podcast. I am dumb enough to think that it would not even be a flagrant one, that, you know, the the playoffs are a little tougher and not as soft as the regular season, you know, and that, um, you know, you you can bump a little more and, you get away with a little more, you know, like I think tonight uh, was probably a reputation, a reputation thing more so than a hard foul. By definition, if we go through the definition of a flagrant two foul, I'm not sure that play would quite be the definition of a flagrant foul. I'm not sure it would meet that criteria. I'm with Draymond. I don't think that qualifies for a flagrant two, but yeah, in the end of the day, it's a reputation foul. Look, the dude tried to hold him up. I understand your momentum pulls him down. I understand when you are swiping at something, yes, you may hit him or whatever the case is, and it looks like that you intentionally tried to harm the individual in which you are trying to defend. He pulled him down, but his momentum, then when he realizes, okay, this dude getting ready to fall to the floor, I'm going to try to hold him up because I'm strong, so I'm going to hold him up, but yet and still – The referees didn't see it that way, but I think in their mind they had already made their decision before they even got to the table. Before they even looked at it, it was already a decision made in their mind. (laughs) Draymond Green crying victim. Oh, my goodness. The guy that has been top six in the NBA since 2015, leading with technical fouls, is crying victim. Is it reputation? You're damn right it's reputation. It goes along. There's facts that prove his reputation. First off, he has to be smarter than that, than grab a dude by the jersey. The first foul was fine. 
I'm all about playoff physicality. Maybe 15 years ago, none of this was called. The guy goes to the free throw line, takes two free throws. But what happens is when a guy jumps in the air after you give him a hard foul and he's vulnerable off his two feet and you grab him by the jersey midair, when you pull him down to the ground, regardless of whether you tried to catch him or not, what if he doesn't catch him? What if he cracks his head on the ground? It's deserving of it. It's deserving of ejection. And my thing is, look, they still won the game, so it doesn't really matter. He's not going to miss time. But for people out there that are trying to defend Draymond Green, I'm laughing at it. It.